Hi, this is Kenneth Wong, Senior Editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. Now, when you look at the multi-column animations and stress distribution charts produced in a simulation exercise, do you know what you're supposed to do with that? In a previous video title, Introducing CFD to Design Engineers Part 1, ANSYS Senior Fluid Product Line Manager Gilles egan Spiller walked us through the basic setup of a CFD job. It's now time to get him back online to help us make sense of the results. So here again, we welcome Gilles. Now, before we get to the results, let's deal with one critical question first. Since simulation programs are essentially doing number crunching, whatever number you put in, the software is going to give you some kind of answer. So, Gilles, my question is, when you look at the setup, the scenario, and the process, how do you make sure it has gone the way it should? Hi, Kenneth. Well, that's a good question. The first uh, thing you would do is actually make sure that the computation is completed. When you look, for example, at uh, convergence plot, making sure that the simulation converged to a solution nicely. You can also look at uh, monitors, for example. Here we can look at the monitors of maximum velocity, making sure that it's actually stable and not changing from iteration to, to iteration. That's the first thing I would do. But the second thing I would do is also visually in inspect the results to make sure they match what we could expect from an engineering point of view. For example, we can really just check that the flow is going in the right direction, that it's going through the valves, etc., etc. Just make an engineering judgment that what we're actually looking is uh, what will physically occur in the system. Okay, that's great. Now let's recap for the people who haven't watched the first video. What is the case that we're investigating here and what are we trying to find out? Well, we're looking at a ball valve design. And in this, in this design, the flow actually pushes on the valve when the valve is only partially open. So this force could actually deform or move the valve such that the valve could start leaking. What we're actually doing is simulating the flow behavior inside the valve and making sure that these forces is not too high, that the valve will not start leaking. All right, so now we're ready to take a look at the results. Help us understand this, Jules. As we go through this, tell us how you would interpret what you're looking at on the screen. Well, first, I like to look at the general velocity field and flow streamline, basically where the flow is going and how fast. So to do so, I create uh, a plan to display the velocity magnitude and also streamline to display the flow path. As we can see, the flow turns and accelerates in the valve region. Generally speaking, that's what we expected. So we know the results are physical. But when I look at that, I also want to look at the pressure inside the system. And here, I look at a pressure plane, for example. And I can quickly see that there is an area where the pressure is higher than in the rest of the domain. This is because the flow is, quote unquote, hitting the half open valve. The question is, could this pressure be high enough to displace the valve and therefore create a leak? So now that we know the point where the pressure is the highest, what do you do with that? Is there an important number or a value that we can, we can extract? Yes, I'm actually interested in knowing the actual pressure on the valve itself. So I plot the pressure on the wall of the ball valve. And what I can see is that the maximum pressure is around 20 PSI, which is well inside the margin of safety. So I know that for this valve angle, the valve will not leak. So the whole point of a simulation exercise, of course, is to be able to improve the design. Imagine, Jules, that you are now going back to the design engineer to make suggestions or recommendations. What would you say to him or her? Well, what we did here is very good, but we only look at one valve angle. What about other valve angles? Are there other cases or other angles where the pressure we just looked at could become too high? So the idea here would be to have a parameter, which is the valve angle, and to actually redo the simulation with different angles, 20, 25, 35, 45 degrees, etc. 
Now the trick here, and what we're going to use is, because we already did the simulation once completely, there's no need to redo it manually for all the angles. So we are going to use the fact that the software remembers all the setup and the entire workflow for one simulation, and reapply the setup and workflow to all the other valve angle. So that in one click, I can actually, or we can actually simulate uh, all those different uh, uh, valve angles and directly extract the maximum pressure. And again, at the end, the only thing we'll have to do is check the maximum pressure and make sure that it's inside of the margin of safety. Great. Thank you very much, Jules.